Hello and welcome to London for the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. It is, of course, the fourth series, and so far the chips have been flying around the table. We're hoping for much more of the same in this show as well as we hand you straight up to your commentators. Yes, it's the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. Seven players fighting for a lot of money. Matasau, not going to play, is going to get up and walk away. Action on Ivy. Cool. Jack eight, off suit. Well, he's nice. gonna play. Nice. Nice. Cool. Cunningham gonna complete from the small blinds. Tom Dwan taps the table, and we're gonna see a flop three ways. Ten, ten, five. Nice. Couple of hearts out there. Well. Nobody has anything, so whoever bets is going to take this one down, right? And uh, true to form, looks like Phil's reaching for his chips. Thousand. Just begging a thousand. Pretty That's simple percentage play here. Two and a half thousand in there. He figures more often than not I'll pick this up with a thousand bet. Of course, these players all experienced. And know that that's probably what Phil's doing. Well, Tom Dwan not going to let him do it. He's going to raise this one up. Even the small pots, they don't go uncontested. Cool. Well, he's floating one here, Phil. Yes, do not adjust your dial. The cards cool. are correct. Four clubs. Well, gives Dwan a little bit of a draw. He has a gut shot now. Now, he did check raise on the <coughs> flop. Pot is 10,600. Can he bet one more time? This I mean, is Tom Dwan. Of course he can bet one more time. <laughs> but Ivy's range is, is, I mean, it's ridiculously wide, isn't it? It is very uh, very wide, but... Tom also knows that Phil's quite likely to float one in this spot as well. Seven thousand and three hundred. <coughs> He bet seventy three hundred into a ten thousand six hundred dollar pot, and the red chips, those are thousand dollar chips. The purples are one hundred. The action is on Phil Ivy. I wonder if Phil can float another one, or if he's no. It looks like he's re reaching twenty one. Twenty one. And he's raised 21. this up. Well, this is what confidence can do for you. Gets off to such a strong start, Phil. He's now making great plays. Now, just a little while ago, Mattisau said that uh, there's no way Ivy's bluffing there. Is that why Ivy's bluffing here? To show everybody that he can bluff? I think everyone in the world knows he can bluff, but I think he just knew his player in this spot. Beautiful play by Phil. Takes that one down without having to have the best hand. Tom, every time you bet, they just raise you. Every time. How come? Just read the situation perfectly just and picks up a call. 10,000 that he just didn't look like was there for the taking. I don't like the way they're treating you. Great to play by Tom. More often than not, if you're playing against 99% of the uh, players in the world, that kind of play will get through. But the 1%, that's Phil Ivey. He can read it and he can make the replay. Fantastic stuff. And this is truly a marathon of poker games. 24 hours of No Limit Hold'em. And all these players, they've all played long, long sessions. I know you have, I have, most poker players. It's not a foreign thing for them to play 20 hours straight, yes. 21 hours straight. Feldman not going to play. Ferguson not going to play. Cunningham, ace-queen off suit. I bet he's going to play. That's why you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets by you, Gary. Yes. Tom Dwan not going to play, though. And Mattis out, the king-queen. Cool. Now, under normal circumstances, I like king-queen off. But would you be calling a raise from Alan Cunningham, especially an early position Four raise? Players. Perhaps not. But he has got the button. He has got position. The two blinds, of course, who probably feels like he's got quite a lot of value. And as it happens, he hasn't got a bad flop for his king-queen. But it's a better flop for Patrick Antonius. Yeah, Patrick Antonius, a top pair. Cunningham's... 
I think Cunningham. he's got too many. He's, he, he has got a double straight draw here as well. Eight he can thousand. catch a nine to make a straight that he won't want to hit when he's up against uh, Mike Maddisell's hand. And he can also catch a king, which he would like to hit. Cool. There's only one king left in the deck, though. We That's can see three of these players have kings. Phil Ivey out the way. He doesn't have much to, to carry on with this. Real dangerous looking board. Patrick with the best hand right now, he makes the call. Yeah, Patrick going to play a little small ball there. He's not going to build this pot up even with top pair. Seven. Well, that's a dangerous card for all three hands. Yeah, there's a one line to a straight now. If anybody had a nine in their hand, they would have made the straight. Check. Check. And it checks around. Here's the river. Nine. River is the nine. And, wow, it's an action card there. There's a straight on the board. But Mike Matisau with the absolute nuts. Alan Cunningham with the queen high straight. And Patrick Antonius's hand is absolute garbage right now. He can only play I think the board. He I think he knows it is as well. But he's <laughs> it's not going to stop him firing. Whatever he bets is pretty well what Alan Cunningham's going to lose in this pot. I think Alan's going to call it. And madison has got to be just absolutely it's, jumping in his seat. It's a perfect spot for him as well to have um, Patrick leading and Alan just going to have to make the call. Cool. Patrick does lead for 13,000. Alan calls. Well, it's an easy raise from Madison. Obviously, he's got the absolute nuts. The only question is, how much does he raise? The black chips. Right. Raise. Pass. 32 total. Well, the bet's 32,000. Patrick Cantonius knows he picked the wrong spot. He's out the way. Now it's up to whether Alan wants to call the other 19,000. Does he think that Mike's going to do this with just a queen? Cunningham. I... I one of the best players I've ever seen. And we've been doing this for four seasons. Cunningham's been here for four seasons. I have not seen a better player. Just uncanny the way he knows when he's beat. And the, yeah, the thing about that we've seen from Alan is not that, that he's got the maximum when he's got a big hand. It's the fact that he's got away from so many hands and don't lost the minimum. Absolutely fantastic. It's not always about how much you can win. It's quite often about how little you end up losing with big hands. And that's exactly what he's a master of. Mike Matisau wins a big pot there, and uh, he has Patrick Antonius to thank uh, for, for making that 13,000 bet on the river. Anytime I win a pot, I'm happy. Hi, I'm Mike DeMouth Matisau. My biggest poker achievement is making two final tables at the World Series of Poker main event. I don't know why I live there, because it sucks, but I lived in Las Vegas since I was 10. I've been there for 31 years. Even though I might not look 41, I am. I act about 12. I learned everything on my own. Uh, I was a natural. I was just a great poker player from the beginning. I'm probably not near the good of poker players I used to be because there's so many great players now. I mean, I'm top 15 all time money list, so I mean, and I've uh, played probably less tournaments than any, anybody that's in the top 15, so, you know, I can't complain. Alan Cunningham down just under $27,000, but I would not bet against him turning this one around. No, not at all. I certainly wouldn't uh, rule out Tom Dwan still being the big winner here, and he's down about 27000 as well. Anything can happen with Tom in the house. Well, hello there. Phil Ivey picks up ace-queen. And he's mixing it up, just a black call. Raise from Tom, call yeah. from Mike. Last year, that was something, that was something <laughs> special, boy. <laughs> no, you were on, you won the biggest, you won 500. Last year was, uh, it wasn't, it was And Mike, by the way, also mixing it up a little. He wasn't playing aggressive before, but now that he's up 30,000, he's yeah. called a raise with Jack-10 suited. Well, that's a bit of a flop. Oh, this, we're going to see fireworks here. Yeah. Queen, Jack, eight of diamonds, three diamonds out there. Tom Dwan has flopped a flush, but Ivy's got the ace of diamonds. And he's got the top pair. And of course, it's poor Mike Madisau with the uh, third best hand right now and drawing pretty pretty well dead. Kind of tight belly, better than a river. Kind of 
I was betting on with him. Mike Matisau bets 4,200. Well, you know. Phil Ivey just calls. Action on Tom Dwan. Going to be curious to see whether he just wants to. If you raise a turn there, you could have probably won the same. Just a call, or maybe the re-raise. No, if you're in Tom Dwan's, yeah, if you're in Tom Dwan's spot, turn. do you wait to the turn to make the big move? Tom Dwan is only seventy-three thousand dollars deep. I say only, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see all of it go in eventually. I think you've hit the nail on the head, really, David. I think the fact that uh, he's only got 73,000 there, he's going to give himself an opportunity to put the chips in the middle. Well, he's putting a lot of chips in the middle right now. Those red chips are $1,000 chips. Started with about 70. And it looks like a raise up to about 19,000, I'm guessing. Obviously, Madison gets out of the way. He had really nothing there, just a second pair. Well, Phil puts cool. the, the big re race in with the black chips, not messing around. I said, yeah, like 70, right? the way? About, I suppose. Ivy. They're just checking. I think he's moved him all in. Yeah, Ivy has essentially yeah. moved Tom Dwan all in. Tom Dwan is called. Phil needs to catch. Doesn't hit the turn, doesn't hit the river. And Tom just Dwan's going to double up against Phil. Phil Ivey makes the move on the flop. Tom Dwan quickly calls. A blank on the turn, a blank on the river. Mikey, you bet the flop? And then it's pretty good for <laughs> Phil knew, even if he's up against it here, he's, he's more than likely going to have some sort of outs by catching a diamond, as long as he's not up against nine, ten of diamonds, of course. And with Tom Dwan being Tom Dwan, he doesn't actually have to have much of a hand in this spot. Yeah, very, very difficult for Phil Ivey to get away from that one, especially against that particular opponent. Well, that's the way Tom. That's the way reason Tom plays the way he does. When he gets a hand, he gets paid. Tom Dwan, by the way, now up to one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars, and just like that, Superman is human. As I said, Tom Dwan. Up $55,100. And now that he has chips, he's going to be even more dangerous. Phil Ivey, still our big winner, up $66,000. And our big losers, Patrick Antonius and Andrew Feldman. Feldman down nearly $100,000. Full tilt, poker.net, million dollar cash game. Seven of the best at this table. Well, six right now. Tom Dwan having a short break. Mike Maddis out, takes the big blind instead. Phil Ivey with the ace jack off suit in first Bowden. position. Pass, pass. He's going to play. Pass. Ooh, wow, and there it is. Alan Cunningham with the big pocket kings. Raise. It's 2,000 from Phil in first position. Looks like about. It's about 7,000 back from Cunningham. 7,000 and 300. How much did you start this hand with, Alan? Um, 70 something, 75. Cool. Well, he makes the call. I think you were about to say if there's a play you're going to lay down Ace Jack to for a single re race, it's definitely going to be Alan Cunningham. No, I was actually going to ask you here's the flop. 7-6-3, well, it's a pretty good flop for two Three, kings, six, but against a player like Ivy, you never know where he's at. Is there a player at this table that Ivy respects more than Alan Cunningham? Probably not. Maybe Patrick Antonius. He's also played an awful lot with Tom Dwan, don't forget, as well. Tom's a very tricky Ten player thousand. to play against. Here comes the bet from Alan. Definitely respecting that you expect him to have the hand, definitely. $10,000 bet on that flop. The flop has completely missed Phil Ivey. Don't know if he's likely to float one against Alan. Oh, it looks like he's lining up 27,000 there. Is he going to put a pressure re-raise back on Alan? Cunningham only with 72,000. 
I don't think he gets away from this hand. Well, we have seen it once before, these two players in a previous hand in the million dollar cash game. Yes. Where Phil just kept on firing, kept on firing, and eventually Cunningham got away from pocket aces when he was up against a set. Phil not going to try it this time without the hand. And Alan takes that pot down. The experienced player, players are, are capable of making those laid outs. They, uh, they've been in the situation before. You just have to let it go sometimes. Uh, in reading other players, you have to realize what they think of your game and how they think you play. And then and from there, you can sort of reduce their hands. I had a pretty big hand, especially against uh, a player aggressive, as aggressive as Phil Ivey. I, I had two aces, and Mike Madison had limped under the gun, and I raised him, which normally means you have a, uh, a pretty strong hand to raise an under the gun limper. Phil Ivey calls in the big line, and Mike Madison also calls. Phil Ivey bets uh, all three streets. So I feel like after calling him twice, he could be almost certain that I had an overpair. And now on the river, he bet a, a modest amount. 35. That's exactly what I thought you were supposed to bet. But it really looked like a bet size I would call him again with an overpair. So uh, because it looked like I had an overpair and looked like I would call him, I had to disappoint him by throwing it away. He's laid it down. Yeah, he made a good lay down for sure. I mean, um, sometimes, you know, you, uh, people make good lay downs against you. Sometimes they make bad lay downs. He happened to make a good one this time. And now they're talking about straddling, just to uh, refresh our viewers on what straddling it is. It's pretty much an extra blind, but it's a live bet. And you are uh, putting in double the big blind, but you get to act last, pre-flop. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, a positive EV play, an expected value type play, but... Sometimes it's a, the kind of play that really gets the action going. Someone who's stuck will quite often do it just to make the game a little bit bigger. But when you've got some of these players in the pot, you don't need the action to be too much bigger. The money's going to go in there anyway. Two fours from Phil Ivey. And here's a King Jack. Cool. Now Ferguson doesn't play too many hands. He's going to play this one, though. He's out of position against Ivey with the King Jack. Well, it's a pretty good flop for King Jack. Yeah, you're talking about a, a completely dry board. Jack, seven, deuce, rainbow. 3,000. Small continuation, but probably thinking he's protecting his hand here. He'll find out whether he's in front or not. Doesn't need to risk any more than the 3,000. Now it's just a question of whether Chris calls or if he re-raises. It's an interesting spot to be in because if you're Chris Ferguson... All you really have right now is reverse implied odds. Because I don't think Phil Ivey is going to put another chip in the pot once he gets called or raised. But if a four comes off, you could lose a lot of chips. That's true, but if he puts the re-raise in to protect his hand, the only way more chips now go in the pot is if he's behind. So, well, he's decided to re make the re-raise, just protect his hand, maybe find out where he is. Nothing Seven wrong with either play. Both have their, their, their strategies. Small re-raise. Now he's just made it bigger. And he's out of position. So Phil kind of half floating one. Half thinks maybe there's a chance he's in front. Either way, he's got position. And that deuce doesn't change much of the board. Now if you're Chris, what do you do? Can he actually think he's ahead? I mean, I have to think that Ivy's floating there thinking he's behind. I mean, on a board of jack, seven, deuce, rainbow, when you are check-raised by Chris Ferguson? Exactly. It, it, if you're up against Chris, yes, I think that's totally true. But Chris giving him a chance to make another bet. One thing we've seen from Phil Ivey, he is not letting any pot go uncontested. Fighting for every chip. 16. 16. 16,000. And he bets 16,000. Now it's a question of how much does Chris like his hand? Well, inherently, this is the problem with playing a hand like King Jack offsuit out of position against somebody of Phil Ivey's caliber. Pot is 36,700 and it's 16,000. Back to Ferguson. Well, he's made the call. 
And this is exactly the way that Ferguson cool. made a lot of money last year in the Million Dollar Cash game. He let his opponents bluff at him. He also lost a big pot when he went behind. Not getting away from, uh, was it the aces? Exactly. Ace. Well, that's a scary card for the King Jack. Of course, he's either up against a bluff or he's not. It's going to be no, interesting to see whether Phil makes another big bet. Now, Ferguson checks. Action over to Ivy. If, if Phil bets, that Chris knows he's only beating a bluff. Does Ivy have one more bullet in his gun? I think Ivy's always got more bullets in his gun. It's a question whether he's got the finger on, finger on the trigger or not. Now the one thing that's so dangerous about Ivy is Ferguson knows he will value bet pretty light. To some extent, this is almost a good card for Chris. Check. Check. The only hand he was really in trouble against was where he's jack. Queens or kings might shut down or make a smaller value bet. Check deuce. Well, he's Check. checked it. And uh, <laughs> Phil ends, uh, Chris ends up winning that pot. I think uh, it would have been very interesting to see what would have happened if he had made a 50,000 value bet in that spot or thinks it is a looks like a value bet. But uh, we'll never find out. Would Chris have made the call? Very interesting pot, though, David. Yeah, well, the ace of spades on the river changes some things. I mean, I think Ivy, he's betting ace-jack there if he made top two. But if he had ace-jack, he was ahead the whole time anyway. Exactly. He's obviously betting aces full if he had a pair of aces in the hole. But, but does he bet or queens, queens or queens? Kings or queens, he might shut down. We're in the heart of London for the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. Seven players at the table. One million dollars at the table. And it looks like we have a live straddle. You can see the 1,200 in front of Mattisau. The red chip is 1,000. The purple, 200. The blue chips, by the way, are $500 chips. And if you see those black chips, I believe those are 25,000. I think you're right. What that live straddle actually means is Mike's going to be the last person to act. And if anyone else wants to enter this to this particular hand, it's going to cost them at least 1200 What oh, it good. also does is it puts a lot more money out there for that's, people that's to go and fight for. And that's brought Phil in with a, a pretty marginal four-deuce offsuit in first position. And we definitely wouldn't have seen such a large pot or a large bet from him cool. if the live straddle wasn't out there. And Mattis are going to call out of position... Heads up against Ivy with a hand like 5-4. Well, just doesn't want to leave that 1,200 behind. He's caught a little bit of it. It's not an ideal flop for him. But he might see a turn. Especially if it's cheap enough. 6,000. Now, I just remember from last year, Ivy seems to have Mattisau's number. Cool. And I think, I think Ivy's inside his head. I mean, to me, Ivy can win this pot. He can finagle to win this one. Juice. Check. Well, both players have a little bit now. Matisau with a pair of fives. Ivy with a pair of deuces. Both of them with a three for a straight. One. Twenty. And That's there you go. I think against other players, we saw earlier on, Phil Ivy only fired one bullet against Tom Dwan. Didn't think he get. Didn't think he can get Dwan to fold. But against Matisau, he knows he can get Matisau to fold. Kind of a marginal hand there. Real. Let's oh, like, yeah. Remember the Joe button. And Joe we've got Biden's. another straddle here. Patrick Antonis has decided to straddle. Now, what's the reason for straddling, though? Well, for a lot of the players, it's to make the action a little bit bigger. Give them a chance to win a bigger pot. Also means they get to act last before the flop. And quite often, people make marginal raises because they feel like that 1,200 is going to be dead money. So they, they may put in a 4,000 bet just to try and pick it up. But people like Patrick Antonius are world-renowned for blind defending. If you want to try and steal blinds, attack, attacking Phil Ivey well, and Patrick well, Antonius is possibly not the, the most sensible thing in the world. But if anyone's going to have a go at it, it's Tom Dwan. 
Well, Tom Duan has given it a go. He's raised up to 4,000. And I, it's about 100 to 1 on that Patrick Antonius is going to defend it with his King-10. Well, could he re-raise here? Well, he could well do, because he knows there's an oh. awful lot of, uh, of you know, monster range for Tom Duan to be raising on it's that up. button into his blind. Oh, we're going to see a flop. He does defend. Oh, there's a 10. How about two 10s and a ten four? Ten. Wow, this could get interesting. Check. Check. He hasn't fired on the flop. Has he smelt something? Queen. Oh, Queen of diamonds on the turn. Tom Duan cannot win this hand unless he gets Patrick Antonius to fold. Check. Good luck on trying that one. Check. Check, check. Well... You would have expected a continuation bet from Tom Dwan. He hasn't. We may see a bet in a call here. Assuming the bet comes from Patrick. Well, he makes another check. Is Tom going to manage to check once more? It so doesn't look like Patrick has any of this. This is a small valuation bet from Tom. It, it definitely is. He's only betting 3,000 into 10. Well, it's definitely a value bet, but at this point, if you're Antonius, can you raise? Remember, Tom Dwan has checked both times. I mean, is it possible he backed into Jack-9? Something like that. 15,000. 15, he very rarely seems to play what-ifs. He's more likely to re-raise, and I think that's what he's done. Well, Patrick has re-raised. And that was the problem with such a small value bet from Tom. He's opened the betting up again. It's up to 15,000. Well, he gets away from the hand. He doesn't make the 12,000 crying call. So Patrick did his absolute best to try and get something out of Tom. He only managed to get 3,000. Possibly a value better 7,000 into Tom on the end would have been a better play. I'm Patrick Antonius, one of the biggest cash game players in the world. I realized it pretty early. I knew that I had what it takes to play with the best. People have a different kind of views about the game that I have. And uh, I don't like the way other people usually think. It was always my goal to play bigger and bigger and with the better players and better players. And I knew you'd need to be a Superman to do it. So. There's Andrew Feldman. He's down a cool $106,000. I don't think it's that cool. That's cool for me. It's not my 106000 Certainly cool to watch. Well, he's got to take a peek at his cards and see what he has. Now we've been seeing, we've been watching everybody else straddle. Andrew Feldman, though, not looking to gamble as much now that he's down 106,000. He does not straddle, but he does raise it up with the ace three. Pass 1800. And by the way, that's the smallest pre-flop raise we've seen. Most players are raising it up to 2100, 2400. He makes it 1800, three times the big blind. Yeah, we're definitely seeing. Wow. We've got a nice hand here from Patrick. Patrick, come and get some food. Twelve more, Ryan. Oh. You have to be awkward. It's too small. That's it. Okay. So what for that? Make it three thousand. Check. Check. Ten king seven. Well, it's only one over card to Antonius's jacks. Pot is now fifty three hundred. There's a continuation bet from Feldman. You knew that was coming. And there's no way Antonius is going anywhere, right? No, not for this bet, for certain. Andrew has played very tight, oh. and this is his first first position raise. Jack. Check. Turn Check. is the jack. Wow, look at that. Okay. The river's nine. the nine of diamonds. It's a pretty scary card. Oh, it's a very scary card there. Anybody with a queen would have a straight. Or an eight. Thank you. Check. Check. I think that's why uh, Patrick's decided to check it. Well, He's with a set of jacks there, all he has is a bluff catcher, right? Exactly. And Andrew's got to realise the only thing he can beat here, the only way he can probably win here is with a bet. Any hand that's been called on the flop will have hit. <coughs> that's what's going through his mind. Of course, the other thing is, the only thing he can do here to lose more money is to make the bet. Well, he's stacking out chips, and he's putting out about 8,000. 8,000, so eight. And if that's 8,000, can you get Antonius off of his set of jacks? I don't think so. 
No, he's not. Antonius is going to call this. Okay. One more, I think. Thank you. That's it. And Andrew Feldman, another big hit to his stack and his confidence dwindling. Yeah, it's nothing going his way so far today, Andrew. Let's take a look at a leaderboard here at the Million Dollar Cash Game Season 4. Chris Ferguson on top, up $53,900. Tom Dwan right behind him, up $46,500. We take a look at the bottom, though. Alan Cunningham down $22,900. It could have been worse. Got rid of a very good second-best hand, but Andrew Feldman, though, down $117,000. Eight seats at this table, only seven players. How does that change the game with only seven players at the table? Well, you're going to have to up your game a little bit. You're also going to be mixing it up a little bit more, lowering your starting hands. 300, 600 of the blind with a running ante of 100. That means there's more in there. It's going to cost you more to just sit back and not play. So you have to mix it up. And uh, the master of mixing it up, Tom Dwan in there. And Tom opening well. Mike mixing it up with just flat core with the aces. That could bring in the whole table behind him. He's got both Phil Ivey and Patrick Antonius who like to mix it up. Phil already in there as well. Well, well, we've got aces and aces here. That doesn't happen too often, does it, David? No, not very often at all. I mean, Tom Dwan in there with the Queen 7. Phil Ivey with the Queen 6, but those are kind of relevant. You kind of see the black aces of Matisau and the red aces of Andrew Feldman. And the way Andrew Feldman's day is going, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw four spades out there. And the one thing about this raise, it almost looks like a squeeze play. Exactly. With, th with three people in there, everyone knows that Tom Dwan could have any kind of half hand. Phil's quite likely to be calling him with any kind of half hand. And it you looks like it could be uh, even just a, a call from Mike. And that's why Tom's calling. It's a good size, actually, as it happens, the re-raise from uh, Andrew. Now the action's on Mike Mattis out of the mouth, trying to decide what to do. Pretty sure a re-raise re is going to come in, though. He doesn't want to play this hand like four-handed. If he calls, it's probably going to bring in Phil Ivey. Raise. And he is going to re-raise, and I see a black chip in there, which is at least 25,000. Yeah, it's looking about 35, 40,000. It looks like a dream spot for Andrew Feldman. 37,100. And some of the suspense taken out of this one, but still anything can happen. Yeah, I'm sure we've both been in pots where four of the suits come down. It's a harsh way to lose as well when you've got aces. Now, if you're Feldman, would you ever just smooth call here, knowing that Matisau is kind of committed to this pot, putting him on kings or queens and going, OK. I'm all in. Quite possibly, all but in. the only thing that would worry me about that is having Tom Dwan behind me. I call. So I don't blame him. He might not want Tom in there all as in well. Both players so excited when you saw all in and call, and both players kind of deflated when they see the other player has aces. And you've got the black aces against the red aces. You guys were happy for a second. Second time this week. Yeah. Well, that's a diamond. Diamond. Well, Mike Matisau can't win the pot anymore. He can only split it. He's hoping the turn card's not a diamond. Oh. oh one more. Diamond. Oh, here it is. $175,000 to the river. Oh. See, the old Mike... The old Mike is negative. The new Mike knew it wouldn't be there. That's deep. That is. It's true. How do I get those hands? That's what I want to know. I don't know. It's the first hand I've had today. I thought I... What's really great about it is I thought I set the trap. When he re-raised and you called, I said, beautiful. And then he has to have aces too. Figured you oh, what a dream situation. You pick up aces and you get action, and unfortunately, your opponent has aces also. Oh, Mattisau picks up another big hand. He's got the pocket jacks. 
two black jacks here. He's in first position. He's going to raise it up again. Twenty-five hundred. It's quite a big raise. It is a big raise. Possibly he doesn't want to be seeing a flop with too many players yes. behind him. Here comes one. Oh. At least he oh. hasn't got any overcards to the jacks. It's jack ten of diamonds for Patrick. Certainly doesn't want to catch yes. top two. Yes. Tell you, if Matisau had lost with the aces there, yes. we would have never heard the end of it. Oh, cool. oh Alan Cunningham kind of opening up his game. Well, it's going to be at least three-handed, and he expects probably four with Tom Dwan. Yeah, Tom Dwan's got the old Dolly Parton, nine to five. I think he's thinking about a squeeze here. Cool. Well, he might have thought about it, but he doesn't do it. Guarantee you he thought about it. Pot is just over $10,000, and here's the flop. Three ways. King, seven, seven deuce. King. And uh, rainbow, awful lot of draws out okay. there, as in none. And amazingly, uh, you know, okay. Madison's jacks are still good, and no okay. one else has even caught a pair. Check. And it Check. checks around. Here's a turn. Ten. Turn to ten. That's a good card for uh, Mike. Gives second best pair for Patrick Antonius, and with a check around. Check. He may figure he's still in front. Yeah, well, Cunningham's got third pair. madison has got second pair to the board. And Patrick Antonio's second pair on the board. And Tom Dwan there with two hearts in his hand. He's picked up a flush draw. It's and like here he goes betting it. It's like a family meal. A little, a little something for everybody. Exactly. And with no one with the king, the action's going to be a bit slow. It's not going to be too expensive to see the river. To play. And I really, I, I think Madison is a little bit uncomfortable in situations like this. Yeah, I think so too. Cool. He makes the call. Pass. Well, that's going to get Patrick out of the way. Pass. Patrick knows that Madison is a pretty tight player. And we're heads well, he's up done here. well to get out of there in that spot. That three changes nothing. Tom, only way he can win this is possibly with a big, big bet. I don't think Madison is folding no matter what. I gotta tell you. Well, there's only one over pair, only one over card to my pair of jacks. The three of diamonds completes nothing at all. And you've got to start thinking of hands that Duan could have bet. He could have picked up hearts. He could have eight nine. He could have had queen jack. I mean, there are a lot of cards you could have theoretically picked up. But there reaches a point when you can only beat a buff. And do you think the man's bluffing? That's all he's going to boil down to if he does fire a twenty-five thousand or something into this pot. That's what makes poker Would so he better 10, for instance, you know? We know Tom Dwan had bet an awful lot less than a 10. But only as a bluff. I mean, if Cunningham or Ferguson are betting in this case, I might lay down jacks down. There's no way I'm laying Sorry. jacks down in this case, and I think Dwan knows that. This is why he checked. Mattis, I was going to check yeah. it behind. Tom looks to the heavens, possibly thinking... I might have been able to get a bluff through. I think David's probably right. I think you uh, probably did well to check that one, Tom. I think Mike would have called him down. Jacks aren't really good when six people call the raise. Today's your day, Mike. Let's all to it. Yeah. This ain't my day. We've got like 20 hours left. How are you going to make it 20 hours? If you get ahead... I ain't leave. I'm going to tell you right now. You, you heard it from time? me. I ain't leaving. Really? Yeah. And you want to bet on that? We can we can bet like 20000 Okay, So if you ever leave, if you ever quit. I'll tell you what. If I quit before the game ends, if I don't quit, you owe me 20000 If I do, you owe me. I owe you 20000 It's a fair bet. Is it? Yeah. It's a good odds. Come on, Phil. I'm big line, please. That's what I'm here to do. Crush you guys. Not so much you. Thank you, you. You, I can't have. I don't want to hurt any part of you. You got a hundred thousand to win from me. So I want to keep you. You know. You gonna be there? Hell yeah, I'm gonna be there. You gonna sweat me in? I'm gonna be there every minute. Two thousand seven hundred. None of them are gonna be there. Race here minute. from Pat. Patrick Antonius. I am gonna. After a limp from Pat. Phil Ivy. Well, that's the reason why he's raised it up, King Ten. Doesn't need much of a reason. That much is certain. No, no, no. I mean. 
<laughs> Mike Madison not going to defend with his 6 4. Phil limped with the ace four to call a raise. Well, you know, once he limps there, there's no way he's going to fold, especially not to Patrick Antonius' raise. Here's the flop. 10 5 deuce. And uh, Patrick Antonius, a top pair. Phil Ivey now with the gut shot wheel draw. Needs a three to make that wheel. Can also catch the ace, as we know. Seven outs. Quick tip for the audience. If you work out that you've got seven cards to improve, a quick way to work out what percentage you've got is just to multiply those outs by four. That's why he's got 28%. Only works on the flop, of course. That percentage goes down when the turn card comes. Seven of diamonds, not a help. And Phil Ivey still with the same seven outs. He needs a three or an ace on the river. Or somehow he needs Gantonius to fold. Which right now is going to be a bit tricky. About 13,000. Actually, no, Patrick tends to bet a little bit more. more probably more like 15,000 from Patrick. Talking about the most penetrating eyes in poker. Patrick Antonius, Phil Ivey, two players I certainly don't want to be playing against. Well, you went with my first guess. 13,000. Pot is now nearly 31,000. 13,000 over to Ivy. Well, he's reaching for the chips. He's not going anywhere by the looks of things. Well, it looks like he's got something more creative lined up. That looks like 33,000 to me. 33,000 total. What is Ivy trying to represent here? Is he trying to represent a small set? Small set. Maybe sevens and fives. And we've seen Ivy in there with 10-7. Yeah, we have. I guess they don't have to be too close to be connected in uh, Phil's hand. Your style's good for a cash game. Yeah, and, you, don't you get play. nothing from Ivy's face. Absolutely unreadable. Now, this is the dangerous spot for Patrick Antonius. If he calls the 20,000 on the turn, he Puts might be faced with a big bet on the river. Exactly. Makes an 83,000 pot. Whew. And he's going to call this. Well, he teased us by picking up 125,000. Just made the call. Pot is now $84,000. Six. Well, the six diamonds doesn't seem to complete anything. Well, I mean, I guess you could say it completed the three, four, or maybe, I'll just throw this at you, if Ivy had picked up a diamond draw on the turn. Yeah, Something like jack ten of diamonds. Exactly. Phil obviously knows now. He has to bet to win this pot. It's a pretty scary card for him. He knows that Patrick could have been found with anything on the flop, and then maybe he's fired again with a flush draw. But he does know. Pot is $83,900. The red chips are 1,000. The purple are 100. The blues are 500. And the Phil Ivey's got some black ones behind there, and those are $25,000. All in. All in. And Phil Ivey's all in. We haven't seen Phil Ivey make this kind of bluff. Unbelievable. It's a tough call with just a 10 and a king kicker. It's $101,000 to call. He overbets the pot. It's exactly the way Phil Ivey would play this if he had a set. Or if he made two pair, something like that. Oh, it's an awfully tough call. Patrick Antonius trying to play this hand back in his head, figure it out. Is my top pair good? Well, he knows right now the only thing he's beating is a bluff. Oh, obviously. And if, I'm, if I'm in Patrick's spot. All I can keep keep thinking about is Ivy maybe check raised me with a diamond draw. And uh, he's picked it up on on the river. Oh. 
these two players have played against each other an awful lot online and a fair bit live as well. The way this hand played out, I mean, it's almost as if Ivy thinks his ace of hearts is the ace of diamonds. Well, he lays it down. It's a great play by Phil. 100 thousand dollars on a stone cold bluff great play by phil ivy once again showing us why he's the master well with some of the biggest names in poker here at the full tilt poker.net million dollar cash game there's certainly plenty of fizz at the table and lots more of the same guaranteed next time we'll see you then but from all of us it's bye for now